Uh, greetings to you, my friends, wherever you may be in the world today. Uh, Alan Clemens here in my special guest series of conversations and dialogues and interviews. Today, I am honored uh, to have uh, a new friend in my life over the last seven months who is a prolific, I use the word not carefully, but an understood prolific art director and production designer of numerous feature films that many of us have watched numerous times. Uh, Oscar award-winning art director and production designer. Um, thank you for taking the time, Dennis. If I can say a few more words. Uh, I'm fascinated by art. And obviously it means something different for everyone. But to be given multiple millions of dollars and say, here, sir, create the art for this film. Uh, hello, all the Bond movies, The Truman Show, uh, Blade Runner, uh, won the Oscar, I think it was in 2003, for Bugsy. And I think Bugsy is the story of what is this film? Benjamin Bugsy Siegel, who uh, founded, is it true, Las Vegas? Sure. Um, and so rather than getting into all the various nominations and wins and 11 nominations and this award, uh, a victory here, uh, the BAFTA Awards, which are the equivalent of the Oscars in England, the British Academy Awards, numerous nominations and a number of wins. Uh, I'd like to take this time, it's very special for me, and I hope for you, that we'll learn something about uh, not just art direction and production within the film industry, uh, but the tenacity, the insight, the lessons learned. Uh, this gentleman is a longtime Ashtanga yogi. Correct. And a meditator. And that means a lot more than asana. We all know that at this point. It's a lifestyle. It's a way of embracing, engaging, transforming. And so the life of a yogi, a meditator, a conscious artist of life, his beloved dear friend of decades, Tom Sewell, who he and I are both here on Tom's property in this incredible environment. And what does it mean to bring conscience and dignity and tenacity and patience and artistry to work with some of the brightest, most extraordinary minds, some of which I'm sure have the most colossal egos, some of the wealthiest artists in the world in Hollywood. And what does it mean to collaborate with so many people in a short period of time with so much money and so much pressure to create these spectacles that we live by and breathe by? So my way of saying thank you, Dennis, for taking the time. Let me start out so simple, yeah. if I can. Uh, what is the role of an art director on a feature film, and what is the role of a production designer? Well, the category is called art direction. Um, within that, there is the production designer, uh, which is the title that I hold, and uh, there, uh, it's just a long lineage of, uh, of history. Um, so, um, many art directors will work underneath me in the production, um, supervising art directors, co co designers. Uh, it's a uh, it's. The industry has grown to the scale, uh, which is all about what the public wants. Uh, the public is driving the over series and series of a hundred years or so of making films. Uh, we want more. What do we? What can you give us? How can you stimulate us? And uh, I've been doing it for forty years now. And I've been lucky to have run into, uh, through by my own design, uh, uh, amazing mentors and, and people that um, I admire. And, and, and everybody has 
has an interest in film because film basically has a magical quality to it. It's a synthesis uh, starting with a story that is, uh, is uh, highly, highly choreographed uh, through, through a, a story, a script, um, and uh, through the process of uh, replaying that. Into a uh, um, into something that uh, that hopefully the audience wants. And so the process, which was very new to me until I talked with you. So essentially, you are approached by a director with a script. Correct. And they're saying, Mr. Gasner, we want you to bring this script to artistic life. What is the process once you're given a script? What is what is that? that job? Well, uh, I've been asked this question a long time. It, basically, I'm the architect of the movie. I create all of the environments that the actors work in. So everything we see on a film? Correct. The visuals? Correct. You create it, not the director? The director, every director is different, every human being is different, too. so everybody has different interests. Um, the, it's my job to facilitate that. So all of Blade Runner, all of the Bond movies, all of 1917, all those guns and dresses and environments and lights, that's all you. It's, well, you know, the first thing is, is the business is a, is a collaborative business. It's a business of gathering as you said earlier, gathering talent together. Producers' jobs are to gather the talent. The, the talent being, well, first of all, the story. Uh, I mean, here's the example. Uh, on, <coughs> on, uh, on the Bond films, uh, Cubby Broccoli uh, found a novel uh, that Ian Fleming, Fleming had written. Ian Fleming was was part of the war and, and he saw a lot of things that he thought were interesting to write about. He started writing about it and he said, I want to write about one person and his name is going to be James Bond. And, and that's how it starts. It's a story about a man going on a journey uh, for uh, the government, shall I say, because that's part of this, this story as everybody has seen those films, understands. But where is that? What does that place look like? How does that look? Uh, you'll hire a director. The producer will hire a director. The director then will say, I need the place. So the pro he'll hire a designer, a production designer. In the old days, it was called art director. Now it's called production designer. And, and, and this will start to manifest itself and say, well, where do we want to go? Where do we want to take him on a journey? What is the journey of the story? So the writing take is, is as a, a writer would sit and imagine where, where he would go, but then you have to find that place. And so uh, that could place, could, they could say, well, we're, we want to go, uh, you know, we want to go to Switzerland. And so then the production diamond has to go to Switzerland and find something interesting in Switzerland that would relate to the story. So, so that's your role. My role is to be an explorer within the story and discover it, and it's tireless. I mean, I, that's why, why I do uh, my practice in the stronger practice, uh, to build strength, because um, the journey that I'm going to go on is, is a massively physical one. Um, I'll travel uh, on, on a Bond film, I'll travel, I'll travel on 75 airplanes during the course of making of the film, not including the cars, not including the helicopters, not including uh, you know, trams that go on top of mountains, oh my goodness. all those things. And it, 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 every day is a, is a huge journey, which is, I love, which is fun. You know, if I didn't love it, I wouldn't be doing it. Um, and how many people would be working with you or for you that you've hired to help bring the creation to the screen like that? Well, it grows uh, as needed. Um, it could be up to 300. 
Holy moly, what a task. So, so the, it's, it's just the, it's the nature of what the audience wants. You know, they want something, they, <laughs> they want something more. They, 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 it's, it's a, it's a unique situation. It, it, and you're so, coordinating that many people on a daily basis to orchestrate the vision. Everybody is coordinating themselves, they're all professionals. They, everybody has their job. But they they're accountable to, to you all the way at the top as the well, production designer. Correct. I start. I start uh, by creating imagery um, it, through uh, physical drawings and manifest drawings, uh, through concept art, through any any way that I can uh, facilitate uh, the story and tell show that to the director, show that to the producer, show that to the actor. And that, so that they can be stimulated, and and and, uh, and it's all about stimulation. It's it's like it's like uh, creating magic in order to create magic. Unbelievable detail. Talk about a collaborative art form. This it's, is... it, it's 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 I think the ultimate uh, uh, collaboration, and it's a. And, and the it's epicenter unique. of it for you, the, the soul essence of it is what. What gives you the joy to do it every day? Obviously, it's far beyond the money and the accolades. What's what's the passion in it? The story. The story. It, yeah, it's all story. Story drives everything. It's what what do you want to say? How do you want it? How do you want? Because it's a character that's going to deliver that story to the audience. At the end, the the audience is going to go on a journey with the character from the beginning of the film to the end of the film. And there's an arc to that, and it, that's a very studied uh, set of rules in storytelling, filmic storytelling, that, uh, that we all have to know as, a, as part of the team of designing films, of creating films, you know. And it's, it, it, um, not one film is, is done the same way. What is a day in the life of a production designer prior to shooting? And what is like a week in the life of a production designer once you're shooting? Uh, what does it look like so we can understand what your life is like? Well, uh, can you just paint that picture for us? <laughs> Luckily, I have a, an amazing, amazing wife who has been in the film business before. <laughs> and she, so she understands me. When I go into that world, that world is, uh, is, is totally uh, dedicated to me. Um, so it's 24-7. Um, I think I dream all the time about the project. And so that's... Uh, so total immersion in other words. It's total immersion. It has to be. And, and it's fun because there's a, usually a small group of people that I start with. I'll start with a, a location manager if, uh, if I'm traveling to go to locations. I start with, uh, you know, an assistant and an art director, a decorator, and we start to start to collaborate in, in what we're doing, and and we talk about it. We make choices uh, constantly. You know, there's the art department is one that one facet of the film. Then there's of course there's the costume department that we interface with all the time about color and palette, and uh, so it's. It's, it's physical space, so that means the architecture, but also the style and the emotional content of that. And I was lucky enough to discover this, because <laughs> uh, I studied to be an architect, and, and in, in the architecture school, <laughs> there you go. That makes sense. in architecture school, you're taught to build the biggest building in the world. That's the first thing they say when you walk into the, into the first class, and, and that's daunting. Uh, how, but then how do you go about doing that? Uh, my third year in the engineering phase of the school, I, I, uh, I got a little bit nervous about it. I said, well, I'm being the build, biggest building in the world. Is it going to fall down and kill people? You know, and, 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 and a friend of mine said, you're thinking way too much. He says, there's a film playing down at the cinema I, I saw last weekend. Go this weekend and take a look at it. And I went and I sat in the theater. I uh, had not heard about the film, didn't know that much about it, and, and uh, um, at the end of the film, uh, 
the audience left, the lights came up, and there was a white screen. I stood up and I looked at that screen and I pointed at it and I said, who's the architect of that? Mm. And the film was called, uh, excuse me, it was called Lawrence of Arabia. Yeah. And, and when, when Peter O'Toole kind of went into the mass of the desert, I said, that's bigger than any building that I could ever build. Mm, interesting. And so it's a story that shows you a journey that's, that is so massive that, uh, and, and what happens in that is uh, it, you get transformed, you get lost in it. Uh, and so I was, I, I look at, I look at building, this is today, still look at building, and what's the story of that? Does it tell a story? Is it just a story of the people that are in it? Is it a story about the architect and the client who commissioned it and so on? It's still one entity. But I get to travel through worlds and worlds and worlds. I can, I mean, the Bond film will be shot in nine countries. And that is, that is infinitely bigger than one building. Unbelievable detail. Do you look like, you know, going back to Lawrence Arabia and there's, a, a, you know, one of many desert scenes, you would be the person who would choose the location or that's a location. Yes. You would be. I would. You'd travel the, throughout the, the camel Sahara. they're on. I would travel throughout the Sahara with location to manager. We'd probably find somebody who was local who knew things. We would say, and we would explore. I've done this all over the world. Yeah, it's a Marco Polo kind of journey. You're like really on the ground. It's exploring. Exploring. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. And so then you make connections with who on a professional level can allow you to bring all these people to film on this part of the desert. Yeah. You've got to segue it, secure it, keep the cars off it, keep the helicopters from flying that, over that's, it. That's, that's other responsibilities because there's a film company. And within the company, every, there's, the, everything is broken down into, into different responsibilities. And my job is to secure the visual for the story. The visual to allow the actors to perform a scene in, in that, and and so uh, that's a that's a big responsibility, and, and and I take that weight on because I'm passionate about it. So we're in a a 1930s nightclub in New York. You have to secure that. You have to make I, I that. Have to I have to find it. I have to find it, and then uh, it's secured by location manager who manages the location, uh, it, and and then I mean, it's everything is extremely complicated. Unbelievable! And what about there's seventy five people in there, thirty two men, and X amount of women, uh, and they're all in different nineteen thirty seven suits. Correct. And the music is this time. All of that is being put into what we see and hear, or that. Yes. And that's all. The paintings on the wall. Everything is a Dennis Gasner decision. Uh, the music is not mine. The, the music can't. The, the orchestra. What the orchestra looks like can be mine. Um, the everything is the, visual. Everything. Anything that's visual is is part of my responsibility. So this uh, the the yeah, lead actor. Yeah, and I'm just going to preface one thing. He said. There's two ways of, of, uh, of playing the game of the place you just described, this restaurant. If the scene, multiple scenes take place in this restaurant, then we have something called sound stages. Then I will build that location, design, design location as an architect would design it from the 30s. If it doesn't exist, uh, like in Blade Runner, Blade Runner is a, is a fantasy. So I have to create all those spaces. It can be done in, in, in sound stages, or they can be done on locations. There's so many ways of doing it, uh, but you have to be, you have to be intelligent, and light on your feet, and, 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 and make really good decisions every day. Okay, moving along into a dimension specifically interesting to me, and I think some of the audience you know, you're obviously, I mean, I've met directors and producers who are talented or award winning, but you've been, you know, four, four decades, correct? 
us. We're given a lot of money, a lot of responsibility, a lot of expectations. Right. We don't want failure. We don't want a loss at the box office. We want a winner. Yeah. We've got a great story. Everyone's dropping in. You've got someone, Warren Beatty, so many talents. What is some of the insights that you've learned, Dennis, on how to navigate these relationships? It's collaborative, clearly, but what's the wisdom that you've learned? Some of the points on how to elegantly, mindfully, caringly, courageously navigate complex artistic minds to share a vision and bring it to fruition. What's the wisdom? Well, I have one, <laughs> there's one word that, that comes, to, comes to mind. Uh, um, Whatever I have, whatever I find or design, um, I have to. Uh, first of all, I have to satisfy myself. What I want is, I want somebody. I think, okay, what is the audience? What will make the audience so excited about this this environment? Now, that's just projecting into the future, not knowing what the audience is. Mm -hmm. But the first person that's going to be the audience for me is the director. Okay. So I'll, I'll take, take this vision that I have. It's going to be a drawing. It's going to be a painting. It's going to be some, some series of photographs. It's going to be some, some, some way of presenting something. I present that to him and, or her. And I want, all I want to do is hear one thing. Wow. That's what I want. So you look for the wow moment, primarily with the director. Correct. And then well, from that's, there. that's my first my audience member. Beautiful, interesting. Okay, so, so I keep it really simple, and you go to the source of, uh, of how we keep moving forward. You always want to keep moving forward. You never want to, want to stop, because once you start, the clock is ticking, and you just have to move. Uh, the, <laughs> the, People say, what's it like to design a movie, Dennis? And I said, well, imagine this. You're walking in, in, in the country, and, and it's a beautiful day uh, in a forest, and you come out of the forest, and there's, a, a, there's some train tracks. And you say, oh, that's fun. And so you get on the train tracks, as kids do, and you're walking on the train tracks. And then, and then all of a sudden, you hear something. Way in the distance, a sound. Then you go, oh, okay, well, I'll just keep walking. And, and then the sound gets a little little louder. So, well, I better get off the tracks, and you can't. Mm. So you're on the tracks, and then the sound gets bigger and bigger mm. and bigger mm. and bigger and bigger. And pretty soon, that, that locomotive is right behind you about two inches, and you're running as fast as you can. Oh, wow, wow very interesting. That's my job. Very interesting. Okay, so there's Dennis Gassner who's been hired to do this remarkable film. You've got the director, you've got a process with the woman or the man director. You are telling a story visually, you're at home, and you're now in this process that's uniquely yours. What is, what is your, what are you doing there to stimulate your process to give that director something to see to go wow? Take us from that moment that's interior, where you begin to, there's unlimited choices to state the obvious. Uh, what do you do to simulate your artistry to give that director a wow moment? Find the best in the world. High quality. The best in the world. The best in the world. So you took the tallest building to the best in the world. The best in the world means... But, but the, be the best in the world relative to the story. But relative to the budget as well. I don't think about the budget at, 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 at that point. What I want to do is I want to find the best material. And um, that, luckily, luckily I, I've been able to afford to work on films that, uh, that can afford those things. And so... It, that's all relative. Now, the first film I did was a million dollar movie, and that, that's a very small, very short little film. So you take that, that's, that's a problem to solve. So you solve that problem. I have so much to, to, to deal with, and, and then I can allocate that to the time period and make that work. The second film that I that got was a little bit more money, the third film, and so on. And you know, to the point where uh, you know, I've been asked to do 
you know, one and two and the three James Bond films. Are and just, just a statistic for all of us, what's the budget for you for a Bond film? I, can, I can't disclose that. You can't disclose but that. But it's, it's... Multiple million films. Of course, but, but what it is, it is, is relative to, to its history. So the Bond is, is you know, I did Bond 22, 23, and 4. Okay. Now, there's a history to all of those, and they incrementally, and you know, have have finances attached to it for the ability to to serve the audience. So, are you as production designer, and so much of what we've seen, you know, you know better than me in this, is, you know, for lack of a better term, bear with me, special effects, green screen post-production, how much of what you design is choreographed, say, with a highly talented editor with you to talk with you about, listen, let's mutually work on the green screen and you do some environmental things. How much is special effects and how much is real furniture out there? Everything I do, I'm old school, and I, did, I started before visual effects. Okay, so, got it. So now imagine The Godfather. Uh, my mentor, Dean Cavallaris and Francis Coppola, the first film I worked on was Apocalypse Now. And, and, and mm. so that history and the Godfather history was my reference for creating something. And of course, as, as films get, get more complicated and, and throughout my history, I've seen the growth of visual effects now, visual effects is, to me is a great paintbrush. You know, if I want, I say, okay, well, I, I want to see, I want something to be bigger than I can create if I'm building a set on a sound stage. If I want it to be three times that big, then I go to the visual effects department mm -hmm. and say, I want to make that three times this big. And, and they say, well, fine, you create that and uh, and then we can manifest that through our technology. So, but it has to be designed first. So the technology is, and this is a, a, an area that I can't even talk about right now because it's too lengthy to even talk about in this. But it ha it's a manifestation of, of, uh, of uh, extensions of environments. Uh, and, you know, I... I, I I just heard that uh, Dune won for uh, uh, the, the best art direction this year, and and I had worked with uh, Danny Delano on on uh, on Blade Runner two thousand forty nine, and but I told Danny I said, okay, <laughs> yeah, this film has only one advantage over the film in nineteen eighty. It has the ability to, to, to about scale. We can create a, a, a bigger scale film mm -hmm. than what really did back in 1980. Here's, you know, here's uh, you know, 35 years later, all the technology has grown to a point where I can say, okay, I just need to build this and I can make it three times that big. Interesting. So the audience now, because I always go back to the audience. What is the audience? How do, how do we, but how, because there's an appetite, a visual appetite in, in the marketplace for, in the competition of, the, of, of films. So films, as, as the technology has grown, the ability to create massive, and interesting, and exciting visuals, it, it has grown exponentially. So is it, when you go back to what you were saying about wanting a wow moment from the director, how does appealing to the audience interrelate with the director's role? This is my creation. This is a story that I wrote and I'm going to direct. Are they, are you pointing to primarily art directors, directors in the feature film industry, primarily out of Hollywood, is driven by the public persona? Or what? It, well, so, the, the ultimate goal, you know, everybody loves the Academy Awards because you know, it happens once a year, and, and you get all of those incredibly talented people who are voted to go and sit and and, and, uh, and be part of that experience. So it's the the joy of uh, of uh, 
if you look at it, 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 it nominating, you know, the, 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 the spokesman, spokesman for a country. You know, we go through this process as human beings want to put people into a position where, as films are in a position of being honored. Well, let me ask you this. What, what in your heart you would want to bring forth that excites an audience? If you had your ultimate dream story, what, what is it you want to bring to the world? What, what well, the things that I've been doing already, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's such a, that's such a loaded question. I, Do you I, have a hidden passion in there that you would love to see this type of story brought to the public? I've done it already. <laughs> done it already. I've, I've done, I mean... So there's I, very little I, I, I've, I've been very, very lucky to have worked with extraordinary people. Okay, let me and, ask you this. This, this is, because you're in a very rare seat to have worked with such talent. You know, there's emotional intelligence, there's social intelligence, there's spiritual intelligence, there's mindful intelligence, biological intelligence. What would you say over your decades of experience are some of the attributes of creative intelligence? Oh, uh, how do you stimulate creative it, it, intelligence? It's 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 entertainment. It's it's a an ability to create something that people can go and spend an hour and a half, or two hours, or three hours, and escape into a world that has been been created very specifically for them to have. An experience. It's it's an experience, and that's all that it is. Whatever you gain from that experience, you know, it gains something that you want to talk with about it, with your friends and say, "Gee, I, I saw this film the other night, and it was really wonderful. You should see it." And, and you have seen it, and then once you see it, then we can talk about it. Or you go together with somebody, and you see the film, and then you go out and have dinner afterwards, and you talk about it. It's a what points of interest? It's something to talk about, and and we need it's escapism. We need to have. It's like reading. It's like uh, having a vision, having a dream at night. You wake up and there's a dream. That's that's a movie in your own mind. That's your personal experience. But these are highly highly controlled, and and projected out to, I mean, you project it out to the world to see. How, how much, you know, it's curious to me, like, you, you're speaking about hyper-immersion, like hyper-flow, high-flow is a popular term of it. When you're in this developmental phase with all these people creating this story mm -hmm. to evoke forgetting the wars in Ukraine and Russia, forgetting mm -hmm. climate collapse, forgetting my inability to pay the rent. I'm here. I want 90 minutes of escapism to think and dream. What, what? Like when you're creating this, are you also losing external contact? Are you deeply immersed in the story yourself? Or are you more into a, a very careful mindfulness of the process rather than being immersed in the story? All of it. All of it. Yeah, I'm, I'm exploring. I'm exploring for, uh, for again, back to, I, I, I keep saying, it. what does the audience want to see? What haven't they seen? What's different? What's around the corner? If I go around this corner, is that going to be it? So is that going to be the place? And so I'm being driven, constantly driven, until I come to a place and I go, wow, look at that. That's it. Okay. We're done. We're done here. We, we have that. That that's we tick that off our box. And that would be like one scene, one of one hundred and fifty scenes. Wow! So so the clock is ticking. The train, train. is this this way, yeah. and I have got only a certain amount of time in order to get this done. And so, help me understand, and help others understand. So when you're making this film, it's not all complete. You're moving along in a creative process throughout the process. You don't have it all set and designed at the beginning. Nobody does. Wow, so you really do have that analogy of the train right behind you. You've got to act. 
That's why. That's why you did it. Yeah. Wow. You know, if you read when you read a book, okay, you're sitting there reading a book. It, it, it takes you. I mean, my wife reads a book a day. You know, so it, it, and and I asked her how was that. She said it was good. Okay, but and I said, can you explain it? She said no, because it's just too complicated to explain. Because she's taken the words and she's translated all of that into some sort of a visual experience for herself. And she and and then it's done. So what is it? From A to B, it's a story. It tells something, it tells a, a journey, whatever the journey is gonna be. But her imagination of the environments that all of the actors or whoever they're in are, are, are participants in the story, uh, it's, it's gone. Wow. Okay, moving along. You've had the benefit, the joy, to be close in sustained time with talent. Yes. You know, certainly within the genre of the film industry. If I can ask you, not to name drop, but what are some of the films, I encourage you to take some of the films and why and whom within that film brought so much unexpected joy and insight for you. What were some of your best films and why to work on? <laughs> well, I, I would just say all of them because they're so passionate. You read the script, like my wife reads the book, and I have a vision. I can see that. So I have to then take and find all of the things I just saw, wherever that those places are going to be. Got it. So I can, you know, sometimes I'll make little notes, I'll, I'll do a little drawing as I'm reading, you know, a little, just a, a memory note. And, and uh, you know, I'll have a little book full of them. And then, uh, and then every time I, every time I, uh, I go around the corner, it changes. So I, because it, I go, well, that's better. This is better than that. They would like to see that more than they would, what I just saw back there. Mm -hmm. okay, this is much better. Let's do this. Let's do this until, and then, and then, then I turn to the next corner, and it's oh, that's even better. Okay, so it's a journey. I get to a journey to a place where I realize, okay, this is this this is really good now. This is like this is too good, and and the fact is that it it works within the context of the possibility of actually having it work. Because once it's once it's found or created, if I draw it, it has to be quantified. And as soon as it's quantified and it's moving in that direction, then then I'm done with it, and I'm still running in front of the train. So it ha so and then I give that into my team. I'll say, let's manifest that. So that okay, that's off off my plate for the moment until I see it in in another dimension. So then I give it to the team. Now the team can be 40, 50, 60 people that are working, doing drawings, uh, creating it to see if it actually, we can actually afford it. We can, uh, we, it, it, it gets incredibly exponentially complicated at that point. My job just in the discovery in my mind is only the beginning. And then it has to be manifested. Once it's manifested, then it has to, then then even even goes faster. The intensity gets bigger and bigger and bigger because the the the, the special relationships have to be pulled and pushed and pulled. And then I show the director. I say I, I say and I'll just do a, uh, do a drawing on on a, on a floor with tape. And I'll say and then we say well the actors is this enough space to work in for the actors. And, well, that's bigger than this, bigger than that, it's a bit bigger than this, big. So everything is pushed and pulled and pushed and pulled and pushed and pulled and pulled for three to five two months to a year of manifestation. And, and that all, and that's why I'm trying to keep this all in my mind the entire time until we start shooting. And then we start shooting. Then that continues because all of that has to, it's in sequence, so we we shoot the first one first, so we get the first one totally ready, and the second one is right there, being being worked on still. 
and then the next day we shoot for one day and then they go to the next one and by that night at, the, at 10, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night we're still finishing all the touches on that, that's all being organized and then the film company comes, the actors come, the story comes, all of it comes, cinematographer comes, costume designer, everything, is, and everybody's going through the same process. It's all being worked on organically the whole time. The whole film is organic all the time, is moving through on those railroad tracks <laughs> with the train pushing us behind, the whistle is blowing, and we're moving and moving and moving and moving. It's, it's unbelievable to go through. Whew. Whew. Thought living in a monastery was complex. <laughs> it's just this oh, is really yeah. something like awe inspiring, but it's more dimensional than that. You it's, have to it's, be so many skills to state the obvious. Yeah. Uh, it's I I you know I've I've studied all disciplines. Uh, if somebody if somebody can't paint it, I go over and paint it. If somebody can't cut it, I go over and cut it. If they can't move it, I move it, shape it. I mean that, but I can't do that because I would kill myself. So that's about having good people around you that, that start to think about. It, think you have to be a remarkably sensitive, emotionally intelligent director and manager of relationships. Very complex roles under it, pressure. It's the same for it's the same for everybody in the in the film. Industry. The director the same, the cinematographer the same. But we're all conditioned. We've conditioned ourselves from very small little teeny films to the next one. They go, well that's interesting. Now I can translate that what I learned from so you learn step by step. A lot of people just can't do it, and they and they then they, they go bye bye. They just go okay. That's too much too pressure. Much, too much pressure. Wow, wow. It takes a certain type of person to do it, and I and that's and that's when you see at the Oscars when you see the talent of the people that are there. There's an energy force that is a. Uh, 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 Uncomparable to the world. A technical question: You know, you get a script, everyone's moved by it. There's financing for it. Everyone signed on. How often, in the process of making the film, are you individually or collaboratively looking at a scene or part of the script and you change it? Well, change happens all the time, and hopefully, it's for the better. And, and usually, it is. So the scripts are changing as you're making it. Pretty, not really, or sometimes. Yeah. Yes. They are. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it, this is the, the fun part for me, is that the, when a, a set is created, an environment is created, let's say it's on stage and the actors walk in, the director walks in, the actors walk in, and I'm standing there, and uh, let's say it's a Bond film, and Daniel walks in and, uh, and looks at the set, and he looks at the set in... Uh, a story sense. What is what is the story? How what is my movement here? How does I move? And then of course then then and and so he's looking at the space. And I've done five films with Daniel, so he knows that I'm going to give him the correct space. So he's going to know knows that feeling is going to be right, and he's looking for at his job at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, so is the director, so is the cinematographer, and, and, and so is the costume designer. Everybody's doing the same thing. Once they arrive in a space, and this is what a lot of people don't know. People just say, well, they just went and found a room, <laughs> and they shot it. Um, it's, it's, it's not true. It's not true at all. No, no, they, nobody, unless you know, unless you, you're listening to, and you understand, and you look, at behind the scenes and, and so on and stuff. And this is why behind the scenes are I think be more important because it opens the door to the public a little bit more about about how how all this is manifested. It's like you know, it's like how did Charlie Chaplin get to do what he did? Look back in the silent era, look back, I mean you go you have to be a student of history. You have to be a student of film. All of this is relative to how we do things because that becomes part of you. And all of that goes
goes into this energy. Unbelievable. You know, I, I dare ask you some of the attributes of, of say, a, a, a quality, talented director. You've been so close to so many in so many films. What would you say are some of the favorable qualities that you have experienced in working up close to these people with so much, <laughs> so much creative power and financing behind them? What well, makes a good director? Uh, good storyteller. Um, that's primary. Really storyteller. Well. It's always about the story. And that's all that I preach to everybody. I said, you know, story, story, story. You know, the story well, let me just type right in there. What, what makes, from all of your years, what makes a good story, according to Dennis Kastner? Uh, how I feel when I, at the end of the film. That's all that you're looking for. You're looking for an experience. You don't want to know, you know, you, you go to the end of a film and, and, and you've had an experience that's changed your life. Changed your life is the key. Yeah. Changed your life. And films that you've worked on that you feel have accomplished that epic result? All, all of them. them. All of them. <laughs> it, it's, like, it's like birth. It's like having children. You know, you, you've... You've made a decision. You've met with the director. I mean, I've been lucky enough to have done six movies with the Coen Brothers, and five with Sam Mendes, and you know, lots of other directors, uh, Danny Villeneuve. Uh, you know, the it's once you meet a person that is so passionately like-minded, mm, nice. you have you have a relationship. Right, right. You have a relationship, and and I know within. 30 seconds if it's going to work. The scene? Or the no, no. We, the it's script. the relationship of the, the, oh, between wow. me and the director is going to work. I, it just, there's, I've just done it so many times. And, and I, that's why I've this, this, done so many with, different, with these different filmmakers is because, because we have a commonality. The commonality is a passion for the work and, and the relationship is, uh, is just, uh, let's, let's go, let's get on with it, you know? I mean, what are we sitting here? We gotta, we gotta work, we gotta, we gotta make things happen. Let's make movies, that's what we wanna do. And, and, uh, and they, they bring the stories, in, in the sense of Joel and Ethan, you know, uh, they, they're writer, director, producers, and, uh, and they bring a story, and I, I'll read the screenplay, and it, it just transforms me. You know, and I'll look at it and go, well, how are we going to go, go about doing this? And, and we always work it out to a place where it's, a, to me, it's magical. You know, it's a magical journey. Um, Sam was the same way. Because, see, Sam, Sam started from the theater. Uh, like live theater. Theater, theater. theater, theater he, which is the hardest way in a lot of ways, I think, because it's, it's always so challenged for, for finances. Uh, but he brought, he came up through through that that, that rank, and then, and then uh, was uh, lucky enough to uh, be recognized and uh, made his first film, American Beauty, which uh, mm. won multiple Academy Amazing Awards. Amazing film, yeah, yeah. And uh, and because of his storytelling and his ability with the actors, and it's about actors. So the, when the actors come to the environment. This is what I love. I love presenting environments that are stimulating to the actors mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that tell the story, that do no more, no less, mm -hmm. exactly what the actors need to, to be performing. Mm -hmm. And also working with the cinematographer. I mean, I've done working with Roger Deakins for 28 years. And, you know, we've done, we've done so many different films in so many different ways. And once you find that balance of things, you, you, you don't even have to say a lot. It, 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 you know, it's kind of like, you know what to do, you know, because you know, he's got like this and this and this and this and this. And, you know, like Dr. Even Nancy Hague and Anna Pinnock. I mean, these are, these are people that uh, you just, you're in, it's, it's, you're in this, in this war that's not a war. <laughs> it's a war, a war of uh, of uh, of not being run down by the train. You know, 
you, we're all in it that way. Mm -hmm. you're, you're collaborating together, you're helping each other, you're mm -hmm. pulling each other along, you're saying, okay, that works, that works, okay, let's get that, you know. It, it's, 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 a, it's a, unless you go through it, it's a hard thing to, to yeah. kind of describe yeah. in a way, but it's just doing it. Sort of a tackler question, bear with me. What, what's it like working with Sam Mendez and uh, Warren Beatty and, and, uh... It's, you know, it's all, it's, I, I call it poetic, you know. It's, it, it's, a, it's, it's like a great piece of poetry. Sometimes you understand it and sometimes you don't, but it's beautiful. Just consummate storytellers just, and presenters just, of new Yeah, art. I mean, they're, they're, everybody is working so hard at manifesting the best thing that they can manifest. It's highly professional. Extremely. And, <laughs> and, and finding, finding that balance, it's the balance of, of, of all of us, you know, as a group. The producers are watching that and seeing how it works too. I mean, Barbara Broccoli, Michael Wilson, you know, the Bonds, you know, they're just, they're, 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 it's in their blood. They're mm -hmm. born into it. And, and it's magical, you know, there's such, consummate people. And Jim Carrey with the Truman Show? Oh, Jim's amazing. I mean, you know, everybody's gone through this amazing journey. You know, they, they Jim, <laughs> you know, Jim slept with his agent in a car for a year in, in LA trying to get a job, you know, and, and it's like all of these, you know, the stories of how people dedicated de to, to be part of this business, to be able to give their talent I have something to say. I want to be able to say it. I want to be able to be involved. Give me a chance. Right there, beautiful. You know, for all the kids and teenagers and young adults, the people out there who aspire to bring their heart, their art, their passion to the world, what would you encourage them to, to do? Some of the, the guidelines on fulfilling your dream watch, in the art world. Watch all the best movies you can. Awesome. Uh, look at it, analyze it, talk about it, uh, talk with friends, make movies. You've got, everybody has a cell phone, you can make a movie out of cell, you know, with your cell phone. Try it, see what it's like. See, see what, what, and then say, well, how, I wonder how to do, you know, Blade Runner 2049 with my cell phone. Okay, figure that out. Look at it, go back into it, analyze it, think about it. Don't waste your time doing stupid stuff. Do really, really intelligent. What's a couple of stupid things to do that you shouldn't do? Uh, so we avoid this, folks. Well, you know, it's uh, be clear thinking. Uh, um, read, watch movies. Uh, so immerse yourself in the art that you want to create. Correct. Yeah. Don't wait. Take, take an acting class. Uh, I mean... A lot of people say, well, you know, today's the way, I think you should be a director, Dennis. And I said, yeah, well, that's interesting, you know, uh, but uh, I really love designing films. Uh, so, so I thought, okay, I'll go down that road and see what that's like. And so I went down that road and, and, and I understood what that was. It was a, there's a lot of politics involved, uh, in which is a whole other subject. So not to be intimidated by what looks to be the, the insurmountable challenge of climbing the mountain of being a director, an actor, a cinema photographer, a production designer. Start and manifest is your message. Think yes, and yeah. talk film. Take acting classes. Yeah. Film with your iPhone, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. Learn anything you can about what you think you're going to be good at. And, and you have to discover what you're good at, you know, um, and, and that's something that's, that's really important, you know, the, uh, what you're uh, good at. School, you know, school is important, mentors are important, you know, find somebody that uh, will, you can spring, springboard ideas off of. Uh, anytime you can talk about how to move yourself forward, move yourself forward. That's, uh, that's all that I did. I mean, I was lucky enough to, uh, I left architecture school and they went down to Art Center College of Design and uh, the old school before it was out in Pasadena and I and I met a, I met a friend and we we Doug Claiborne, an amazing man and we we dug 
Doug had heard about this film that was going to be uh, going, and, and uh, he said, well, we're going to work on this film. And we ended up working on it. It's called Apocalypse Now. That was your first film? That's the first film I worked on. <laughs> and, and I was extremely lucky. By it, It's chan luck, chance is, I mean, I don't know how that happens. It just happens. It just, it, it's pure, pure luck sometimes. Um, but also, it's your will. And, and, you're, and you have to show your enthusiasm when you get a chance to be able to uh, get to the next level. And, uh, and that's really important. But you also have to be calm, you have to be, uh, um, you have to be intelligent about how you go about doing it all. And over these years, you've been married now how long? 33 years. And no doubt having that kind of alignment and proximity to trust and love and process has been it's been it's an, it's been an amazing thing, and Amy Amy is a, has been in the business, uh, and uh, and she understands you know what uh, I have to go through in order to make to make to make the art of the film. You know, as you know, and Tom was bringing this up in our conversation about the role of muses and mentors. Have you had a muse? Have you had muses in your career as a director? I mean, a production. Well, director? Amy's a muse to me. Uh, Tom uh, is a, a mentor. Dean Tavares, Francis Coppola, mentors. Uh, all of the, you know, you when you it starts. These are mu mentors and muses. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the. <laughs> you know, I mean, let me say this while you're thinking, if I can, because this is a very. How do you know so many people out there want to manifest the dream of their heart and their art? And it's, but to gain people, have relationships with talent, where you're able to learn to be in a role of what it means to have a mentor. Could you help those who may see this from now until the future? How do you go about being seen as worthy of a mentor, where do you find mentors in these fields? How do you go about it? How do you, what's the advice that you could share with an 18 year old, a 28 year old who wants to get into the business of their art and their film and their whatever it may be? How do you find a mentor? Uh, <laughs> Would you take someone who wanted a mentor? I mentor all the time. Okay. All the time. Everybody who works with me. Uh, uh, comes into the art department, I, I try and teach something to them. I, 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 I interface with them all the time. Giving back, I was, I've been given so much, I try and give back all the time. And the idea, uh, <laughs> um, Dean Tawaris had, had an amazing system uh, for the, that I was lucky enough to see. And, uh, and I've been applying that ever since, and it actually goes back to Walt Disney days. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's something that uh, doesn't seem like a system, but it's a system anyway. Mm -hmm. And it's just how you work. Mm -hmm. It's how you, you have to find a me methodology for uh, how you're going to live your life. You know, I get up at uh, five, six in the morning, I do my yoga, I, you know, I meditate, I, uh, I eat healthy, and then, uh, then I go to work. And I just work all day. And, and work is, you know, I'm just tirelessly working all the time. Because so when, when you go, when you say you have an office that you work in, or uh, what do you Yeah, do? It, well, wherever I'm going to be in the world, yeah. What's it mean like on set of production? Uh, anywhere, well, worldwide. See, every, worldwide. Worldwide, yeah. So when you're working, you're going anywhere you need to go to make that film happen. Correct, yeah. So you must have a lot of mileage points. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I never want to see an airplane again. <laughs> <laughs> Is there something beyond platinum? No, uh, you're, it's, you're it's, constantly it's, then flying. I don't even think about that. You know, I think it's what 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 is what does it take to do the job? That's what I think about. What do I have to do this second to move forward and make things work for uh, for the movie? Because mm -hmm. the movie is uh, the the movie is everybody's responsibility. The director, from the director to the producer, everybody 
thinks about the movie. The movie is an entity. It's a jewel. It's it's a a piece of energy that needs to, needs to happen because everybody's outside looking in on that, and they're looking at that. How do we manifest that? How do we keep that that moving forward? And uh, I was what what there's a, a round table in in the Bond offices in London, and uh, every film has been talked about since you know, Dr. Dr. Uh, no, back in the old days, and I've sat at that for three or four times, and and I was I would say, well, you put a piece of clay in the middle of the table, and everybody around the table starts pushing at it, <laughs> and and you end up with a movie. Interesting. Okay, a sideways question. You know, we've been obviously in what's been known as a global pandemic. We're by and large, we've been shut down, locked down, masked in, and Netflix has gone through the roof. Our iPhones have seen so many films, you can't count them. The audience that you speak about, to transform them, to move them, to shift them into some radical place is no longer in the theaters, per se. How do you see filmmaking having changed now post-pandemic? Are we talking about how people sit in a living room or in a theater? when we talk about the audience? Are we making films for home? Are we making things for series? Are we making things for a 90-minute theater experience? I don't even think about that. You don't? No. It's just, it's, it's whatever... It's I'm the gonna, story. Whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to tell a story. I'm going to tell the best story. Regardless of the context of where it's seen. Where it goes, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Interesting. It doesn't story. matter to me. I mean, it's going to go wherever it's going to go. It's gonna go somewhere. It's always changed. It's been changing since, since since the beginning of film. It's always manifesting itself. And do you have you worked on or are you working on films that are sequential parts or series? Um, rather than just in a I, sequel I, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I am. And, but uh, there's always the first one. <laughs> If you don't make the first one, the second and the third one aren't going to get it, made. Got it. So you have to make the bet again. It's the the bet. This is you have to face what's in front of you at the time. Don't think about anything else. Everything else is is gone. And so if someone's giving you says, "Listen, Mr. Gasner, we have a, an exceptional script here. We would love to have you read it and see how you feel." Then you're sitting down at home, presumably somewhere. Well, you've got this script, yet another script. Yeah. And so you're looking through the lens of your own, like you talked about meeting a director, bear with me, and you know within a very short period of time whether you're going to coalesce with her or him. What, can you talk about the art direction and the intelligence of your assessing a good story when you're reading it? How, what are you feeling inside of you? Besides just, I know what I know and how I feel I know it. What, what, what are you looking for to trust that what I'm feeling is this is an incredible story? I think you just said it. That's what I'm looking for. You want to be able to say it to your wife and to yourself. I just want to, I just want to, well, here, here's, here's the, the uh, <laughs> it comes to me in so many different ways. I don't even, I, I can't, every film is, is different. First of all, every film is different because it's a different thing. It's a, it's, 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 it's a beautiful uh, idea, if it's a good idea, and, and I'm looking for the idea. Is the idea going to be worth all of our time to make it? Uh, so I was traveling uh, uh, five years, five years, four or five years ago, I, uh, uh, my wife and I were traveling. Well, I wanted to go to Alaska. I had a back operation, um, at jumping out of too many helicopters and things and stuff. I mean, it's just crazy stuff. Like, it, it's physical. Filmmaking is really physical. Wow, wow. And, and uh, so I had this back operation uh, to take care of a lot of old issues back in my football days and so on. And, and I went on a, uh, we went on this trip uh, to Alaska uh, from Hollywood. So we have a 1960 uh, Ninja's Airstream trailer. We hooked it up and we said, let's go. I said, I want to chop wood. I want to make fires. That's all I want to do. And 
So we start on the road and we camped out for four months. Uh, about two and a half months uh, into the trip, I was at the end of the road uh, in a place called Homer, Alaska, on, on a beach across the way was Russia. And, and, and I got an email from my friend Sam Mendes, and, and, he, and he said, and he, and he said uh, very ambitious script sending now. The script comes in my, my uh, iPhone. It's the, the light is just coming up. And, and I start reading this screenplay, and I read it in an hour and 47 minutes. It's the fastest I've ever read a screenplay. Mm -hmm. It's highly dyslexic, so, but I don't know how I read it so fast. But I realized what it was, was very ambitious. <laughs> very, very ambitious. It was a journey. One journey uh, of a, a man going to save other people in in the Great War, in which I didn't know that much about. I read this and I said, "My life just changed again." You know, I, and now I'm going to go in to learn something that I've never, never expected to learn about. And and mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. so I called up Sam and and he said, "You read it?" And I said. Unbelievable. It's amazing. He says, when can we be here? I said, October. He said, good, I'll see you then, bye. And that was it. So I looked at Amy, Amy kind of roused, and, I, and I, she said, what are, you do? what are you doing? I said, read this. She read it and she said, oh my God. I said, okay. I said, my life changed. Again, your life is going to constantly change because, because Things are changing anyway. Life is changing. We're going to have pandemics. We're going to have wars. We're going to have all this stuff throughout history. But if you can be in a business that helps people learn about something and and gives them some degree of intelligence or uh, emotional content or stimulation to do other things, that's all I care about. That's nineteen seventeen. You're referring yeah. to. A couple of questions more on the story front. You know, good stories are rare, or so many of them, within the Hollywood industry, that many great films that are great stories and beautifully written never get made, or they're rare to find great stories. The good ones surface, I think, and. Uh, I mean, I I'm really lucky because I get I get generally fairly good uh, material. My my agent uh, uh, David Gershaw, forty years, you know, will only get give me good product to look at. I said, don't waste my time, please. Uh, you know, I, I just give me something you think it's interesting and it, it comes. So by the time you get it, though, there's already a director interested in it and an actor probably attached. Yes. Or not? There is. Well, in this case, in Sam Mendes's, it was uh, something he manifest ma manifested from his grandfather's story that he heard when he was 12 years old. So he wrote that script himself? With, with a writer, with a woman who wow. wrote that, wow. Christy, who wrote, wrote that. They, they, uh, Sam was going to write it himself, and he sat down, and he realized, uh, I need somebody to help. And, and so he found a woman who's, who's, who was a Scottish woman who was steeped in the history of, uh, of the Great War. Mm -hmm. and, and her father taught her about the war she grew up in and all this, and showed she was an expert in the war. And so they collaborated together. So that was the first fusion. So the writing, which I don't get involved with, uh, um, is all that hard work um, is is done before I get it, and I get it, and and that all that power of energy and thinking, uh, the highly intelligent people that that, that are going to bring you say, well, let's send it to Dennis and see what he thinks, and so I get it. He'll send it to Roger. Uh, and Roger sees it, and then so we have Roger, we have Dennis, we have Sam, and then boom, it just, it's, you can hear the train. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Wow, 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 how interesting. You know, 
I they're, guess they're, I'm they're, all, they're all that way. I mean, they're all they all go through some some sort of. I'm kind of stating stuff. the obvious, but maybe not. Let me try to find it. You know, storytelling and the subjectivity of the interpretation of story being great or good is very subjective in some cases. And I've heard over the years, and also being in the world of theater and storytelling, and occasionally a little bit of this writing and scripts and things that, you know, a lot of younger people have a way of artfulness of telling stories that's very different than the three-act, five-act storytelling. And, you know, a lot of young people will be watching this over the years to come, I hope. And I have a daughter who's 15, just turned 15. She's deeply engaged in wanting to be a film director. Mm -hmm. We've had a phone in her hand since she was young. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a very talented writer. and. Storytelling. How does Hollywood embrace classical storytelling with the need for financial remuneration, with the possibility of an Oscar and high financial benefit, with experimental storytelling? Where do you can you talk a little bit about trusting the instinct and the way you're telling the story? And maybe someone will resonate in the industry with your style of telling a story that's different than the classic how to write a great script story, if you know what I'm pointing to. That's, I think, the product, uh, the end result of that is a product of a lot of producers and studio people that are culling for that information. I, they're, 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 I've seen rooms. There's a producer that, uh, that I heard. I was in an office and there was a closed door and and uh, and I said, well, what's behind that door? I asked my assistant. He said, oh, that's somebody's office. And, and and the door happened to be open one day and I was just I said, well, I'll just go back there. Was open. I pushed the door open and it was full of books that were going to be had been purchased to be made into movies. Oh my goodness, really? So, so these books are all optioned. Yeah. Oh so, wow, that's. Massive. So you, you can imagine about a million scripts every day that go into Hollywood to try and get made. Uh, I think I'll train my profession to school teacher, <laughs> astronaut, grave digger. I mean, a million scripts. Everybody, you know, everybody wants to make a movie. I, I th you know how many times people have come up and said, I've got this great idea for a movie. And, I, and, and then I said, I said, good luck. And what do you mean by that? Good luck. The odds are like, I don't know. Going to the moon without oxygen. No, nobody can determine one way or the other the outcome of that. You can't. You can't determine it. So the serendipity of these things going from the heart to conscience to pen to screen, it's so everywhere, this way and that way. There's well, no set well, Okay, path. But, but I can tell one story. No, I'll, I'll just recall it. There was a, 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 a very uh, Dean uh, Zanuck, uh, Dick Zanuck, uh, producer, Daryl Zanuck, head of Fox. Uh, this is a Zanuck family. Um, I'd done a film with and, and uh, uh, with Tim Burton called Big Fish, yeah. uh, which is from a great, great book, very small little book. So it was Forrest Gump, very small little book. Nice little idea, and and he was at a dinner party, and and the man next door, to him, next next to him, uh, he looked at him, and he said, Dean was thirty or something, thirty years old, and he looked at him, and said, Well, what do you do? It's dinner talk, you know. He said, Well, I'm a writer. He says, Oh, he goes, well, so what do you what do you write? He says, Well, I do graphic novels, and uh, and uh, he said. And this is what graphic novels were, it was, there was a whole shift of this new paradigm of what okay, these okay. were. And, uh, and, he, and he said, well, what is that? And he says, well, I've got a copy of it. You want to read it? And he said, oh, yeah, sure, great. So he read it. First of all, the title was Road to Perdition. <laughs> and, 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 and so he took it home with him. He read it. He handed it to his dad the next day. And as he said, I think this is pretty interesting. You read this, and then then, then uh, Dick read it, and he passed it.
it to uh, Sam Mendes, who uh, had just won won his multiple Oscars for American Beauty, and then they sent it to Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg, and uh, and within a week the movie was uh, ready was going is going to be made. Okay, now that that's the fastest that's the that's ever going to ever going to happen. And 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 Dick Dick told to told to Dean, he said, never expect this again in your lifetime. This is a one-off, one chance moment. It was divine. And, uh, and you know, it's an amazing film. Is it a truism that what a film in Hollywood that gets made is driven by financial commercial success, or there's risks to tell great stories regardless of the financial outcome? I don't quite know about the financial aspect of that. That's a question that I, I, I kind of I actually would not answer, because I don't know. It's like on set, where you're, all of you are together, are, is, is there talk of money, talk no. of success? No. Just telling a great story. No. That's it. You, that's all you're trying to do. You're trying to, if you could tell a story that, let's put it this way, I want to go see this movie. Right. I want to go see this movie, yeah. and the result is I, my life has changed. Yeah. That's the winning formula. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not, not we're doing it to, to, to have a chance. We're doing it because we like it. Right, right. And if you don't like it, then you don't do it. So it comes right down the artist's heart Believe in your story, your message. All that I, that all that I say, I tell everybody that. I say, you know, I, 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 people come up to me and they talk about, oh, how do I get into the business? How do you raise this? And I just say, I'm going to just tell you one thing. We're going to, we're going to meet, and I probably never see you again. But I'm going to tell you one thing. Tell a good story. Do it with your cell phone. Do it. Write. Sit down. Write something, and do that. And and and, and that's. That's my gift to you right now. And I say that to everybody out there. It's my gift. Beautiful. Well, you know, that couldn't be a better note to begin on for the future of an artist. And so if I may, Dennis, thank you for your good time. Thank you for your decades of patience and skillfulness. And uh, I want to say as a closing note, you know, I have come to... I would like to say a friend of Dennis, although it's new, but it's not necessarily driven at all by film, although yet I fit into the category of wanting to make a film and making a film. But maybe we'll do a second round at some point when I come back and Dennis comes back or we're in LA together, that you are first and foremost, which is you would know if you knew Dennis, and knew some of his friends, Michelle Sewell, Tom Sewell, so many others, that he's a yogi. What it means to me is a man of conscience and dignity, caring. Rare do you encounter male to male, man to man, uh, not as colleague, but as respect. And I want to thank you for your, your caring and your presence as the most important message that I carry with me as I leave here to go forward in my life. And I want to thank you for the gift of you, along with your decades of professional artistry. So from my heart to yours, Dennis, thank you for your good life and the good fortune in your friendship. And uh, from my heart to yours, uh, wherever you may be in the world, may I encourage you, thank you for tuning in, share with your friends, your family, your children, across continents and languages, and may this very rare encounter uh, be shared and stimulate, I would like to say, the artistry of living our lives as remarkable expressions of both art in action, yoga in action, and good storytelling in action. What's a bad story? Armageddon. On film, maybe, but in real life, we need stories that reinvent beauty and joy and challenge and how to work through our complexities through art and theater and dialogue and tears rather than 
killing, killing, killing in the name of democracy or dictatorship. So may those storytellers out there want to tell stories that have never been told that bring peace and artistry and compassion and envisioning a new world to our great tradition of filmmaking and theater. So from my heart to yours, thank you for tuning in. And uh, I will be seeing you from Los Angeles where I'm leaving tomorrow, and I will continue from there. <laughs>